by AP Litters for the 2020-2021 school year. Um, welcome. June says hello as well. It's her birthday, so she's extra excited. Um, Junie, say hello. At any rate, I um, just wanted to, well, I'm gonna start the work that I'm gonna do um, alongside you all this summer, this morning. Um, it's a little bit later than I had anticipated getting started with this. Things have, to say that things have been unexpected um, and challenging would be an understatement and a disservice, frankly, to the um, power and the protests and the voice voices that we're seeing being used right now. I don't want to do that. Um, but I will absolutely confess to being focused on what's happening in our city and what's happening around our country and what's happening around the world with regard to um, police violence and racial inequality and the protests that we're seeing and some of us are participating in. So it's not an excuse exactly, but an explanation for why you haven't heard from me yet. Um, yeah. April is National Poetry Month. And this April, as you all know, we were stuck in shelter in place mode, pretty hardcore. And I realized that I wanted to mark the time somehow and that I also wanted to, um, I, I wanted a, well, I guess I wanted a project, but I wanted a project that meant something to me that I could do that I wouldn't be doing otherwise. I don't know. I I, I did the sourdough baking and still doing it and love it. Um, did some cleaning around here. I just needed something like intellectually, um, something that I could focus on intellectually that wasn't school connected um, and was for me. And thinking that I wanted to do that I hadn't made the time for, taken the time for in the past. So I picked Paradise Lost up and divided it over 30 days. It's got a little over 10,000 lines in the poem. So I divided the lines of poetry up over 30 days and read a little bit of that every day of April for National Poetry Month. And I posted it on YouTube. It was really just for me, but I also know that some educators um, could use having an audio recording of it, even an audio recording that isn't perfect, because it definitely wasn't. But I realized that I really liked doing it. It was fun. Um, and when I teach that text, if you have really explored your course pack, you'll realize that we've got some things that are secondary sources and we've got some things toward the second half that are creations stories, like primary sources. So um, we usually read Paradise Lost a, a good chunk of it for the creations unit. And so I realize as I teach that, or I have been realizing as I teach Paradise Lost that one of the things students have a lot of trouble with is hearing in their own ears, minds, ears, um, hearing Milton's syntax and the rhythm and structure of his sentences and how they work together just as sentences, let alone as poetry. So I thought, eh, I'm doing it for myself, but I also want to have it in a public space so people can use it if they want to. Fast forward to getting ready to do summer reading for you all, um, putting that packet together. I, um, as I was reflecting on the benefit of hearing me read Milton aloud, I was realizing that the moments that some of these texts that we're going to be reading together this summer, those moments like came together for students after hearing rather than reading the text themselves, just like internally reading. So I figured since I enjoy doing it anyway, I thought I would just go ahead and pick up the text that we're reading this summer and create some videos for you. This is a really long preamble to say, like, I'm going to be picking up and reading the things we're reading together this summer. Um, I'm going to be publishing it on this ridiculous YouTube channel that's full of nerdy, random goodness, I think. Um, and I want you all to have as many opportunities into these texts as possible and as few bars to entry with these texts as possible. They're hard. Some of them are really, really hard. And... And I want you all to be able to engage in what's difficult about them 
rather than getting stuck on things like sentence rhythm or the sound and the structure of the sentence is getting in the way of the thinking, which is really the stuff that's at the center of these texts. Um, so right, I'm just gonna pick up and start. Today, um, I'm gonna start by reading, well actually, let's just look at this for a second together. So here's our first pack. Um, I have tabbed mine so that I have um, all of the things that we will be reading marked off like section by section. And I would encourage you to do that too. If you have bigger tabs or even post-its, I ran away from school after, I didn't run away from school, but when I left school, um, I didn't pick up any packets of post-its, but I did conveniently have some of these like little like plasticky tab things, vinyl-y tab things. Um, post-its will be handy because you can mark what is what, but the tabs will work too. So use what you've got, make yourself some demarcations. That's suggestion number one. And suggestion two is just open things up and look through it with me really quickly. This is what we would have done if we had been able to be together. Um, but we can be together like this. So what you'll find is some worksheet-y things with QR codes at the top. What I'd like for you to do is take each of the texts that you find in this packet as um, it comes. So don't flip around, don't read one bit then another. Try to do each step along the way. So I'd like you first to read the brain pickings piece associated with this QR code. Once you do that, answer the questions. You're answering, answering these questions for yourself, really. Um, I think what you'll find, I hope what you'll find, and then I hope what you'll really trust quickly, is that I am not in the business of um, micromanaging you. I wanna create opportunities for you to learn and to think and to step boldly into things that feel uncomfortable um, because ultimately I know you can do it and you may need some support, that's where I come in. But what I really wanna do is create space for you to think. So I said that to say that you're answering these questions for you and for your thinking. They ought to enrich, like this brain pickings piece, these questions ought to prime you to interact with the next bit of text that's coming and ought to enrich your engagement with it. Plus the brain pickings pieces are just lovely. I love how Maria Popova thinks. Um, yeah, a lot. So I hope that you like them too. If you don't, there aren't very many of them, then they aren't very long. So, you know, find your way in and, and we'll, we'll get to something you like at some point, I'm sure. So brain pickings first, then um, a couple of brain pickings pieces. Then what you'll see, come to is a brief excerpt from Warren Berger's A More Beautiful Question. The subtitle of that is The Power of Inquiry to Spark Breakthrough Ideas. I really like this text. Um, it's first, frankly, because it's easiest. I don't know whether I should be telling you that, but whatever. This year is going to be a weird and crazy and hopefully really wonderful year, so I'll just begin by breaking some of my own rules. Um, yeah, this is first because it's easiest. I want you to find a successful beginning I want you to feel like you can in interact and engage with these ideas. It's a warm up text, frankly. That doesn't mean it's throwaway. I'm sorry about these notifications that I keep getting, they're obnoxious. I thought that I had turned them off, but I have a new computer, so I'm not sure I know how, I, how to do that yet. Um, at any rate, Warren Berger, an excerpt from Warren Berger's A More Beautiful Question. Um, I hope you'll find things in there that you love and that really resonate for you. And I think it ought to be a pretty quick read for you and a pretty quick think afterward. Not as a way to like, oh, we're done with this, throwing it away. We don't ever do that in this class, ever. Like, ever, ever. So have that in your mind to begin with. But, um, but as a way to give you, a, feel like you have some, your feet kind of firmly planted on the ground, intellectually, figuratively. And after Warren Berger, you will get to a section, another, um, another question answer section that um, is specifically for a more beautiful question. While you're reading, 
I, I don't think I need to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway, just to be sure. Um, while you're reading, you always ought to be annotating and you always ought to be writing in your commonplace books. Um, so have, have your handy dandy commonplace book out with you. This one is, um, this is one is one I've been keeping this summer alongside thinking and reading that I've been doing as part of an ongoing, like a newly, surprisingly, delightfully ongoing conversation with some recent graduates. Um, it started during senior, senior week this year, excuse me, called um, the pandemic as a portal. And in your commonplace book, you'll like use it to make notes. I used it to like begin with some questions. Well, I have some thoughts that I write on post Posts, what are these things called? Note cards, I do that a lot. Um, you can organize it in any way that makes sense for you. You will notice that mine has lines, yours do not. My lines are there because we ended up ordering some that were lined and I needed to really make sure we had all the unlined ones for y'all. So took one for our team and took the lined one instead of an unlined one at home. Um, so I've been experimenting in this particular model by writing on one page and leaving the facing page blank. And I'm thinking really that this is going to give me room to come back and make more notes. You do not have to do this. There are as many ways to keep a commonplace book as there are people who choose to keep them. Since we're all choosing to keep them, it makes sense to try to think about what makes, not what makes sense for you. I say that more times. Um, Anyway, I'm halfway through with this one and I'm sure that I will use it up before the summer is out. Because if 2020 has taught us nothing, it ought to have taught us that like every, every month, every couple of weeks comes with, with its own new and unexpected set of challenges um, or maybe challenges that weren't unexpected, but that come out in ways or in moments that we don't necessarily expect them to come out. At any rate, you'll get, as you read, please, please, please annotate and, um, and make notes in your commonplace book. I think they're great places for keeping, um, like writing down quotes if you want to use them that way. They're also great places for writing down your thoughts in response to things we're reading. They do not have to be fully formed. This is not another place for me to check up on you and make sure that you're doing everything like exactly like I would do it or whatever. This is not a place for me to micromanage you. It is a place for you to catch all of your thinking as it's happening so you do not lose it. Um, I know ideally like we're supposed to live with like free and open hands and with a willingness to um, let ideas come and go and recognize that um, our thinking is ephemeral, it comes and goes, right? But it's also abundant, so I don't have to hold tightly to my thoughts, but man, that is a lesson I am I am, and have not really learned yet. I don't know if I'll ever learn it. But commonplace books means I don't have to worry about it because they hold space for my thinking as I'm thinking it. Um, I write down so many questions in these two. I would encourage you strongly to think about writing questions in response to things you're reading Maybe you're writing directly to the writer, but maybe you're also writing like, mm, I'm reading Warren Burger. whoa, that makes me think about this other thing. I'm gonna ask this question that points that way. That's great too. Um, so annotate, write in your commonplace book, and then get to the place where it's time to answer some more questions. Once you get done with those questions, you'll get to the next brain pickings pieces. Um, and they are meant to warm you up for segment number two of our summer reading, which is a longer selection um, from A.O. Scott's Better Living Through Criticism. Um, yeah. I have thoughts about how you're going to respond to this. I'm going to hold them for myself rather than just say all the things right now because it's really not what I do as a teacher saying all the things that's not in my pedagogy typically. Um, but I encourage you strongly to bring 
the um, kind of rhetorical analysis skills that you've been building in 11th grade and think about like the questions that I ask you at the end of each section of reading. So what is this thing saying? How is this thing saying what it's saying? Why are we reading this? What ideas are brought together? What thinkers, what conversation is this thinking part of? Um, but especially like the, what is this saying? And then how is this saying it and why? Why is it saying it this way? Think carefully about that as you're reading, well, everything. Yeah, I was gonna say especially Scott, but really just everything. Um, after Scott, you will come up on the Better Living Through Criticism reading questions. Then you'll come to your a little, if you more, two more brain picking pieces, then you'll come to an excerpt from, it's actually not an excerpt. Um, you'll come to the preface, introduction and epilogue to a book called um, Renaissance Self-Fashioning by a critic, scholar, philosopher named um, Stephen Greenblatt. He's still living. He is a professor at um, Harvard. I'll tell you more about him maybe as we go. His wife is cooler than he is, even though he's really cool. Um, and frankly, after you get done with those questions, that is all of the summer reading that you'll have for AP Lit specifically. So it's three excerpts from three different books. I was gonna say, I was gonna say that are all about and then answer that question, but I wanna hold that thinking back for you. Um, you're also probably wondering like, okay, great. What am I supposed to be doing with this stuff? Um, and frankly, in response to all the things that have been going on right now, I have also been thinking really hard about what I want you to do with the summer reading. So I want you to start just by doing the brain pickings and the questions and the annotation and commonplacing and then reading it all. Um, and once you're done with that, well, you'll know what we're going to do with it all well before then. But I want you to really focus on doing that and starting sooner rather than later which I recognize seems perhaps hypocritical of me to ask since I'm just now getting around to creating this video and, and making it available to y'all. So, um, so that's what I need you to read and do with it generally. You'll notice that that, that really leaves us with like half, I can't, ah, oh, there we go, half of this packet that isn't for the summer. Um, again, something I would have said to you if I were there passing my packets out in person or if we had had a chance to meet like we might have in a normal year, but we don't. So we are going to use this probably every single day of our class. Take really good care of it. I tried to make it a little sturdier even this year than last year because of how long I know we'll be using it. Had them put an extra piece of cardstock at the back. Just be mindful and take good care. Um, it's yours to keep, of course. I hope you can keep it forever. I don't know how that sounds, but it's true. Because you're gonna do a lot of thinking in this and you're gonna do a lot of annotating in this. You're gonna do it over a long stretch of time. And what is so cool about that is that you're gonna have captured your development as a thinker in this text, in your commonplace books. And I don't know of a more powerful thing than to have that sort of monument to, to one's own growth. So this has been like a little sappier, a little sen more sentimental um, intro than I had anticipated. It's also taken a lot longer than I had planned, but I think we talked about things that were important or I did. So I hope you're still with me. And I was getting ready to start reading Warren Burger, but I think I'm gonna stop and then pick up Warren Burger and have Warren Burger be his own video file so that I can uh, publish them separately. Okay, y'all, we can do this. I'm really excited to get started with you. It's gonna be a good year. All right, more very soon, like in 30 seconds.